How you doing everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch. I hope you're all enjoying your weekend. We got a bank holiday here in the UK, so I'm certainly going to enjoy my extra day off. Today we have a review of TT Isle of Man on the Nintendo Switch. And this is something you do if you love speed and have the stones to do it. In other words, massive balls in real life because since the event started there have been 252 fatalities that's right 252 deaths it's been running since 1907 the event itself consists of a week of practice sessions followed by a week of racing public roads are closed off for this event to take place deemed one of the most dangerous motorsports events in the world and the stats certainly back that up the event uses a clutch start where riders start 10 seconds apart from each other and try and get the fastest time over a 37 mile course. The races are split into classes of bikes and if you're into this type of thing, it's certainly fascinating. I'm going to start this review then with the performance on the Nintendo Switch, seeing as this has been out on other consoles already. And I have to say, I was thrilled that this has made the transition to the Nintendo Switch. I like games like this. I like to call these lonely races. If you like this type of game, then check out my review of V Rally. It's a card game, but still, you're sort of against the clock. It's a time trial game. And this has released on other consoles and again while the visuals on those consoles are better the switch does an admirable job of nailing the sense of speed and that's what it's all about very few racing games manage to get this right but here it's absolutely nailed riders and bikes look really good and i had no issue with the performance of course if you want higher fidelity in those backgrounds then you're going to need to get one of the other versions but playing this on the move and putting in some of those times is just really exhilarating if you're going to be picky then of course those backgrounds do have a lot less detail than other versions but it's a sacrifice that has to be made to keep this running smoothly you can change the views on the bike from third person to first person and a cockpit view which is just excellent and for those that like flies in your face then you have to try that cockpit view for an amazing fast experience there are racing lines which you can turn on or off handheld was a little washed out but docked was great and there was no huge lag or missed frames that i came across in my playthrough so a very good port indeed running at a stable 30 frames per second Let's move on to the gameplay in, in TT Isle of Man. This is all about the realism simulation where there are 25 official riders and 38 powerful official bikes to choose from. This is as tough as nails to master, but while I found it really difficult to begin with, I started using the aids like the racing lines to help me get to grips with this game, get a feel for it. And although I was crashing all over the place, once I started to understand the handling and dynamics of the bikes, it was a revelation. I I started to really enjoy this. In fact, I started to love it. I enjoyed the thrill of the wind rushing past my helmet while hurtling down the track at almost 200 miles per hour while having to break down to 20 miles per hour to make that turn, only to speed up over 100 miles per hour in what seemed like less than a second. These are the racing games I love. It's you versus a track eking out better and better times with each run, learning every nuance of the track with your bike and its capabilities. Too much throttle out of the turn can be as dangerous as heading into a turn too fast and hurtling into the side of the road. These tracks to me are familiar and look like our country roads right here in the UK, so I felt right at home. This for me was absolutely getting it right. Accelerate on a piece of slippery grass and forget it, you'll lose control, hit the curb, and your bike will be sent flying off the road with you flying also. No wonder there's been so many deaths in this event. It's dangerous. You have to really concentrate on what you're doing or it'll be all over in a matter of moments and you can forget about that time. And that to me is why this is so thrilling. The controls of the bike feel nice and weighty. Pulling these beasts left and right feels like it should. And being able to change the strength of the HD rumble is a great touch because in handheld, it's set to 100%. The whole thing shakes, but on the pro controller, the 100% setting is fine. It really adds to the feel of the powerful super bikes in your hands. I'm sure many of you will play this and give up on it too quickly and that will be a real shame. This requires persistence, 
patience and for you to learn your craft. I was sitting there with a few friends and we played this for hours and hours on end, praising each other's runs or laying into each other when they messed up, getting better times to make each other improve. A number of modes here kept me interested. Quick plays allow you to choose a number of tracks to play against eight other friends, each of you taking a turn to put in your best time. And oh yes, does it get competitive. These times can then be left on the online leaderboards and for the rest of the world and for your friends to see. Now that's what I'm talking about. Fancy taking on the career mode? Then you can name and edit your rider, buy a bike. There are a number of emails you can take care of, events to enter, but it's not the best career mode I have ever played and this for me was the game's downfall as it's pretty bare bones. Funny enough, I actually preferred just turning this one on, choosing a track, mastering it and posting my times or playing against my friends. There is the option to play a quick race where all bikes will start at the same time and this is called Mass Start, which gives you the opportunity to race against other bikes. But I much preferred TT. Anyone buying this as a circuit racer for me is kind of missing the point. This, as I said, is about you versus the road, chipping out better times. And if you're trying the Snaefell Mountain Track, then just try to imagine 37 miles of road over 264 bends. Try mastering it, which is tougher than all the GP tracks put together. It feels like an achievement just not to crash, but then to get better times is what it's all about. As simulations go, this is a very good one. Sure, it won't be for everyone. Some will want a more arcade feel, others will want that feeling of racing against other bikes on the track. And while you can, that's not why I play this game. There are plenty of options here also to change the difficulty from easy to expert. There are also lots of aids that you can switch on and off from ABS, traction control, anti-wheelie, so you don't fall off from accelerating too hard and bumping your poor little head transmissions, auto to manual, or having the race line on or off. This can be done in the sidecar racing too, but this type of bike was not my cup of tea, although the physics on this was certainly interesting and all that weight distribution. I preferred the super bike over the super sport bike also, as they were much, much faster. In terms of audio then, I think this is absolutely brilliant. The wind you can hear rushing through and your bike gives you a sensational feeling of speed. Change the view and the sounds are more pronounced, especially in first person view. bikes sound absolutely awesome when they are speeding up or slowing down and the exhaust note is just so addictive. The sound really adds to the overall experience of riding a superbike and I honestly believe the devs here have nailed it. In terms of value though, the game is probably a little bit on the expensive side. It has a AAA price tag of £44.99 and for our friends in the US, $49. But can also be bought as a physical edition from Amazon which is on our Amazon shop, so make sure you check out the link in the description. Now, while the career is pretty bare bones experience, I certainly enjoyed the overall experience of this game. And while it is expensive for me, it depends if you enjoy this type of motorsport and the faithful recreation this delivers. I think this is a great representation of the sport for those looking for that simulation. You're going to find it here. Those looking for a more fun experience of terms of sort of arcade are going to need to look elsewhere. I can't tell you how many hours I've poured into this and while £44 sounds like a lot, I've eked out lots and lots of value. Add those leaderboards, online play, multiplayer options and I'm having great fun with my friends or just on my own. So let's get on to my verdict, but before we do, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget if you're a new watcher to hit that subscribe button so we can deliver you our reviews straight to you. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you get notified for all of you that continue to support us. Thank you so much. So in terms of my verdict, I didn't know what to expect with this game, but what I got was a simulation I felt represented this sport fantastically well. There are smaller tracks for everyone to enjoy, as well as the behemoth track, as they say from bikers, there are two types of speed races, the Isle of Man TT and the rest. 
It's not going to be for everyone, but I'll be eking out those times on all of the tracks, building up to that 37 mile test of skill, endurance and balls over six laps. Yes, the Snay Fell Mountain Course. It's not the cheapest game, but for what it sets out to achieve, it does so with a plum and will please those of you who are enthusiasts of this sport. A 7.5 then out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. If you're still here and watching this video, if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. It's really appreciated. As I say, please hit that subscribe button if you're a new watcher and that bell notification. We'd love to see you on our next video. And come on, leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think of this particular game or any other Nintendo Switch game for that matter. Or if you want to talk about games in general, I don't care. I love gaming. Just leave us a comment. We'll do our best to reply. My name's Juan Romero from Switchwatch. I'll see you again on the next one. Take care.